In today's show, it's time for another mock draft, this time a nine category head to head, but 14 teams. Michael Bolton. Let's get to it, to it. Let's get to it, indeed. You are locked on fantasy basketball, your daily fantasy basketball podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Fantasy Basketball Podcast brought to you by Basketball Monster. My name is Josh Lloyd and I am the lead fantasy analyst at BasketballMonster.com and at Yahoo Sports Australia. And you can find me on Twitter as always at RedRock underscore B-Ball and on Instagram at Locked On Fantasy Basketball. Mock draft time. We've done points leagues. We've done Roto. We've done 12 team head to head. We've done an auction head to head. So we're going a little bit deeper on this one. 14 teams, nine category head-to-head league. I'm going to be picking at number six. Um, So I'm excited to get into it. So a little bit deeper, a change of strategy a a little bit because um, you have bigger gaps between your picks and your scarcity changes somewhat. So more premiums can be put on uh, categories like points and assists. Uh, Punting strategy becomes a little bit more viable as well in a 14-team format. So that's what we're going to be looking at today. So going a little bit deeper and your definition of flyers and sleepers has to change as well because you're looking at deeper options. And you know, instead of picking guys at 110 in a 12-team league is like a flyer type guy. In a 14-team league, they're almost a key part of your team. So your more stability with those guys is better than the upside pick at, at that spot. So that does change that calculus somewhat. Just a quick reminder, or not reminder, an announcement. This is uh, pre-recorded because uh, I'm going away for a couple of days at the end of the week and just trying to get some uh, shows banked in. So you guys get tons of content, but I'm just going to have a couple of days off because we're finally allowed to travel and uh, just to get myself ready for the next six months of working every single day while uh, while the NBA season is off. So having a couple of days away at the end of the week. So this show is coming out Thursday uh, and it was recorded on Tuesday. So it's a couple of days out. So if any sort of big injury news or weird stuff happens in the interim, um, that won't be reflected in this mock draft. So just giving you guys a heads up that that's, uh, that's what's happened. Hopefully nothing major happens in that time. But we are going to talk you know, about this draft. I'm going to go through these picks and uh, and make dis- have discussion points and go through all of that. But before I do that, I'm going to have a discussion point about Bilt Bar because Bilt Bar is back. It is the best tasting protein bar ever. New flavors, six of them. Caramel brownie, cookies and cream, cherry barcia, lemon almond cheesecake, carrot cake, and apple almond crisp covered in 100% chocolate. They are soft, they're easy to chew, and they're delicious. They don't taste like your traditional standard protein bar, which tastes like dirt. These ones taste like chocolate, taste like a treat, and it is good for you. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and high fiber. These bars are great if you're on a keto diet, if you're looking to lose, or just to maintain your current weight. The Coconut Almond Bar, 18 grams of protein and 180 calories with only 5 grams of sugar. So go to BuiltBar.com, use the promo code LOCKEDON, and you'll get 20% off your next order. The promo code is LOCKEDON for 20% off at BuiltBar.com. All right, so let's head into the draft room now and get this draft uh, get this draft kicked off. I'm picking at pick number six, so uh, we're off. We're ready to go. All right, so let's get this mock draft off. Anthony Davis goes at number one. Obviously, uh, the concern with James Harden is real. He is back at practice allegedly, but isn't happy about being with the Rockets. And while he, I hate the way that Harden is going about all this stuff, I understand that the Rockets are really a trash organization at this point too, and Fatita has been horrible in terms of his uh, his control of the team. And I understand Harding not wanting to be there, but I don't like the way that he's gone about it. And it leaves a lot of uncertainty, obviously, with what we're doing. Team Kingdom, just really letting the clock run down here in his pick. He might want to make this selection pretty quickly. There it is. Jimmy Harden goes at number two. I'm not all that worried about picking Harden. It obviously, he's an absolute no-brainer, number one in any other circumstance apart from the circumstance that we're in at the moment. So that's my only real concern with Harden. But otherwise, he's such a beast fantasy-wise that even a small decrease in his production um, it puts him in that top five anyway. Carl Anthony Towns goes at three. But um, the uncertainty you have is there. You know, will he maybe sit games? Will they limit what he does? Will he completely half-ass everything? I don't really think that's the problem. But that's obviously something that we have to take into consideration. So Davis at one, Harden at two, Towns at three, and then a bit of a oh, yeah, a bit of a surprise, I guess. Steph Curry going at number four. I have Curry in my top five. Maybe it's not that much of a surprise. 
And then Yanni Antetokounmpo goes. I'm going to turn that stupid friggin' horn off. Yanni Antetokounmpo goes at number five. So that leaves me at number six. So the top five went as I expected the top five to go. So now it is my selection. I am going to take Damian Lillard with this pick. All right, let's go with Lillard. Just trying to you go through, um, yeah, just following my how my projections look, which is, has Lillard uh, at number at number six at this stage. So I'm okay with uh, with getting him there. Obviously, um, I did debate Luka Doncic. You could also debate Nikola Jokic. I think at that spot, they're probably the the discussions there. I don't think you want to take Kawhi Leonard at that area, but um, on a per game basis, he's right in that mix. So after um, Lillard, I take Lillard at six. Uh, Richie Benno there at two for two, two, two. Two for two, two, two. He takes Luka Doncic at number seven. And then I think we should see Jokic and Trey Young go as the next two picks. And that, that to me is a pretty standard number nine. And then things get weird uh, at, at the next pick. So number eight is Trey Young, meaning Jokic falls all the way to number nine, which for Juggernaut, I think is, uh, is pretty good value to get him ahead of Trey Young. I would have picked Jokic ahead of him. Um... So, yeah, I think, uh, yeah, well, Jokic goes at nine. So there, there it is. The top nine is off now. Is it Tatum? Is it Booker? Is it LeBron? Is it Kawhi? If there's a lot. I think it's probably going to be Tatum would be my guess. But And that's probably the direction I would go. But there is a lot of question marks at this number pick. Uh, pick number 10. And it is, in fact, the fun guy. I'm a fun guy. <laughs> Tatum goes at 11. Um... Yeah, Kawhi is going to beat that number on a per game basis, but it's just back to backs. That that's that's the problem you're going to have. But I think there's just going to be so many, so many guys that sit out. Joel Embiid goes at number twelve, really strong pick there. But there's worries around him. We should be getting into the Booker LeBron area now to finish off this draft. But there is um, there's real concerns about all of these guys. So an interesting first round so far. I think yeah, LeBron. Are we looking at KD in this range now after uh, his performance in that first preseason game? I thought he looked pretty good, but the same concerns with Kawhi, the same concerns with um, even Embiid. I, I'm actually, you know what? I'm a lot higher than Kyrie on, on Kyrie Irving now than I was before. I'm not that worried about him. I know the injury is there, but I'm not worried about him sitting back to backs. To be honest, um, Devin Booker goes at 13, and then at 14, D Dunn 98 has a decision to make. Is it LeBron? Um, it probably should be with Booker going. Uh, Kyrie, Durant, they're all in the mix for me here. Does someone reach for Bam Adebayo at number 14? I guess that's a possibility. And my next pick's not to number 23. And I am um, not sure what I want to do there. Does Beal fall to me? Probably doesn't. Do I look at Bam, Nurkic, uh, Westbrook perhaps? But he's going to sit back-to-backs too, um, which again is not a surprise at all with Russ. All right, D Dunn, the last person to enter this draft room is just letting that clock run down, and he takes Paul George at number 14, which, to be honest, is a really good pick. I had him next on my per-game basis um, behind Kyrie Irving. So if you want to go for a guy who's going to play uh, and not have really too much worry about rest, I think Paul George is fine. So there's your first round done, dusted, in the books, happy with my pick there to get Damian Lillard at number six. Let's see which direction we go now. Uh, D Dunn. Scott just really, really running this time down. Is the old dunster. What's he looking to do with this pick? Um, Brad Beal. Huh. Pick 15 for Beal. Yeah, not bad. Uh, interestingly, LeBron has slid all this way. And Durant, I thought one of those guys would have gone there. In fact, I probably would have paired uh, Durant or LeBron with George there. I might have even taken Kyrie with him. Because Kyrie is an absolute monster. Look, how good was he in that preseason game? Now, I'm recording this Monday night US time. It's coming out a little bit later than that. Um, but, yeah, I, we might have seen Kyrie in another game. But I, I thought he looked fantastic. And his abilities as a fantasy player uh, are, are spectacular. Like he could be a top 10 guy on a per-game basis. Right, after uh, Kyrie there, who went with the second pick of round two, we are now up to pick number... That was number 17... 16, sorry. Uh, 17. Kevin Durant went... Uh, like that pick there for, for Durant at 17. LeBron's still there. So someone is going to get some value here. This is really, really low for, for LeBron. Um, we're getting into the, the sh- real shit part of the second um, the, the second round. Uh, Shea Gildas Alexander goes before LeBron. This is wild. Now, I know people are thinking LeBron's just going to really take it easy, but this is getting pretty pretty low for big LeBron or Le- LeBron or James. LeBron James. Um, Buzz, 71. Come on, mate. Let's go make this pick. 
So my next pick, as I said, 23. I think I'm going to have a choice between Westbrook and Paul and Butler, and I'm not really excited about any of them, to be honest. There goes LeBron at number uh, number 19. That's late. So I think that's really good value uh, for Buzz to take him. Then I believe that's the same guy who picked Kawhi in round one. So maybe you've got the double back-to-back risk there. That's, that's something to at least um, think about. Uh, who we got next? Juggernaut picking at number 20. This is where, yeah, it is where things start to get a little bit difficult and I've got to start focusing in on what I'm doing in terms of uh, my pick, which is four away. Do I do I want Russ to go with Lillard? I don't hate getting Russ to go with Lillard. I think it might work for me, but are those games missed going to be a killer? Probably. Do I take... Yeah, big man, Nurkic, bam, Don Mitchell. Does he come into the mix there? Westbrook goes, so I guess that takes it away. Oh, bam goes at 20. Westbrook goes at 21. Um, we're up to 22 here, so I'm looking at probably Nurkic. I'd love to get Nurkic. I reckon Roy might snag him. I am a little worried, as I mentioned um, on the ADP battle with Jared Johnson, about what Stotts does with the minutes. Because if he pl- keeps him at 28 minutes a night, um, that's not great. If he plays him 32, then then he's value at this spot and he's actually you know, got upside here. So just waiting to see what Roy does with this selection. Um, I think Levine, you know, getting scoring um, is super important and Levine's going to do that. And I think that could work alongside Lillard as well. But I'd love a big man. Oh, Nikola Vucevic goes off at number 22. So I reckon, I know they're two Blazers guys and that's a bit of a risk, just mainly with the COVID stuff. Not normally, it's not a risk. Um, or, or do I take DeAndre Ayton? Um, nah, you know what? I've been big on Nurkic. Let's take the big fella, Yusuf Nurkic. All right, so we've got all Blazers here at the moment. Let's take Nurk onto that team. I was debating Aiton, but yeah, it's more just to keep in mind with what I've been saying this whole time, that at the end of that second round, I really like Nurkic. I like Aiton there too, but I'm just going with uh, with Yusuf at that spot. Yeah, could have gone in a number of directions. Levine, another option. If I can get Levine falling to me with round three, so that was Nurkic at 23. If I can get Levine falling to me at my next pick at 34, I'll be really happy. I don't think... I don't think I'll be uh, that lucky. You got Jimmy Butler still on the board, Ben Simmons there, Don Mitchell, uh, Chris Paul, and other guys uh, guys out there. People don't seem to like my uh, Nurkic pick. Um, ben Simmons goes at twenty four. Absolutely fine. You punt free throws with Benny Simmons, and that was MSRF. Let's see what MSRF did in round one. They probably took Yanni. Yes, they did, and the that combination is a really strong one. Jim Butler goes next to uh, Zebrafish at pick number 25. I think that's fine. Excellent free throw volume from Butler. Good assists. He does have injury concerns in his past, and he is you know, 31 years of age, but he's still really, really good. Uh, next pick, Jimmy Johnson. Do I hit it? Yeah, let's do it. So Jimmy's still making his pick while I played his theme song. Interestingly, that DeAndre Ayton has fallen this far to number. Well, there he goes at number. Oh, actually, it was an auto pick, so I'm going to undo it because I don't want the auto picks to go. So I want them people to actually make their selections. Um. So Jimmy, make make your pick. I'll just type that in. Let's have a look. So if he goes again and the auto pick, I'll let the auto pick slide through. And I think Aiton's a, a totally fine selection there, but I just don't like the auto picks going through. In something like a mock, I'd like people to make their actual decisions and then I can roast them for their actual decisions, not their auto draft decisions. But if you get two autos in a row, then you're stuffed. Uh, well, he picks Aiton anyway, so that's fine. So that's obviously who he wanted. Must have had him in the queue, just let the time run out for whatever reason. That's a good good pick for Aiton who could very easily be a top 20 player this year. Um, could he be a 20 and 12 guy? I think that's a possibility for him as well. So we're up to pick number 27 now. 
Levine, Drummond, uh, these guys have got to be in the discussion here. Chris Paul's probably in the third go. Uh, third third round, sorry, that's what I'm trying to say. Jimmy says he's having a hard time knowing when it's his turn. Mate, turn the siren on and you'll never you'll never be in doubt as to when it's your pick, I'm telling you now. Um, Team Kingdom. Time's running down on you. Ooh, it's the big fella, Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Rudy Gobert. Uh, so Gobert goes at 27, and then Chris Paul goes at 28, and that is the end of round two. So some strong picks there. Harden with Paul. Uh, sorry, not Harden. Davis with Chris Paul is, is a good combination too. So things looking okay. Uh, at this at this point, the draft's going well. My team is lacking in steals. That's my big deficiency at this point, but I can get steals in those mid-rounds. Um, I'm looking for another scorer here, whether that's Don Mitchell, uh, Zach Levine, Chris Middleton, um, De'Aaron Fox, Kyle Lowry, perhaps, although he's not that much of a scorer. Well, there goes Van Vliet off the board. This is probably the, the right area for Fred, going at pick number 29. Interestingly, Lowry and Van Vliet in that similar area. I think most people will take Van Vliet just because of the health. So Van Vliet goes at 29, Team Kingdom. Jimmy Johnson thinks he's not uh, going to let the time run down, so hopefully he doesn't let that happen when it comes to him. Again, Team Kingdom just letting that clock run all the way down. And you can already see it here in a 14-team league, how things can change a little bit, how that just that extra couple of picks um, does make a difference between when you're selecting and how it does stretch your team out somewhat. And I'm really going to feel that here on this one, I think. Yeah, heading into this territory. Uh, well, there goes Levine. That was one that I wanted. Zach goes at number 30. I think I don't love Levine as a player. Everyone knows that because I, I think he's a solid player that puts up numbers. I'm not sure he's a winning, driving player, but for fantasy, shit, the numbers are really, really good. So I don't think there's any need to be worried about that. De'Aaron Fox goes at 31. I like that for Foxy. His free throws can be a worry, but getting those assists and points on volume, um, it's hard to do. And he's heading into his fourth year. So some value there on Fox, I think. At the top of my list at the moment is Porzingis and Drummond. i not taking Drummond. I feel pretty good about saying that. Definitely not taking Drummond, and I'm not taking Porzingis. Lowry is up, up for me, but it's probably Don Mitchell that I take with this next pick. Lowry also, again, mysteriously has been absent from the Raptors at the start of training camp. Zebrafish, make a pick, my guy. The time is running all the way down. You're going to get autoed, and I am going to undo it if you get autoed. All right, make the pick. All right, go back and do it again, Zebra. I have undone it for you. You don't have to have this rule in your drafts, but I just think auto picks when you're the commissioner, just roll them back. I, I, does it actually benefit anybody to, to have them as auto? Uh, unless it happens consistently or someone's not there, I don't really think you should let autos just go as auto. Chris Middleton goes. That's probably a little bit early to me at 32, and I'm happy about it because it means that Mitchell is going to fall to me. Andre Drummond goes at number 33. So I will take the Don, Don Mitchell. He's Don. He's good. Um, I'll take him at that spot. Get myself some Mitchell, so that works out. Real nicely for me. That was the guy I was targeting. I was, I was considering him in that uh, Yusuf Nurkic selection. So while Mitchell has never been a top 40 player before, he won't be the same guy he was in the bubble. I still feel pretty good about him in this area, just valuing some assists, valuing some scoring. And the key thing to him is getting to the free throw line. If he starts doing that at high volume, then he's got this number and he smashes it. And I think he's going to be able to do it. So I'm happy to get the Don there. Helps my scoring and my assists quite a bit um, and good free throw percentage boost too, which when I want to go grab some centers and those sort of players later on to help with blocks and with uh, field goal percentage, then uh, I've got a little bit of a buffer in that area. So uh, Kyle Lowry goes straight after that at number 35. Um, Raptors Claw is up here at number 36 and he chooses the Baptist John Collins. Probably the right area for Collins. Um, let's be honest, he's not a second-round guy, even though he finished there last year because of the additions the Hawks made. But at this point, uh, yeah, I think you can't really complain. In fact, most of these picks have been pretty bloody good. It's hard to... Well, I say pretty good. They fall in line with my valuations of the players. Let's put it that way. Juggernaut is up here at number 37. This draft's going to go a while. We've got 196 picks in this one. So that is, it's going to be a bit longer than usual, but that's fine. If you guys can bang these picks out, we'll be real happy with it. And the later rounds are going to get super interesting. The headmaster, Jamal Murray, he goes off at number 37. Um, 
And then we're up to, who is next? Buzz at number 38. At the top of the list on uh, fan tracks there, you can see Brandon Ingram, Pascal Siak- Siakam, and Demonte Sabonis. And as I'm recording this, Sabonis is absolutely going off against the Cavs in their preseason game from Monday. Absolutely dominating. Those guys uh, and Isaac Okoro actually playing pretty well there for the Cavs. I might look at him later in this draft. Ja Morant goes at 38. A little bit early for Morant, but I think he's going to be really in this area. So there's, yeah, I think that's a really, it's a really solid pick. It might be 10 spots too high, but even then, not really. Pascal Siakam goes at 39. Siakam obviously was a disappointment last year for where some people were drafting him in top 20, and then he really shit the bed in the bubble. But he'll be better from the bubble uh, there. Oh, Christian Wood, the crucifix. He goes at 40, and then Ace Vipino takes LaMarcus Aldridge at 41. I've seen Aldridge go at like 34. I took him in a draft at 34, all the way out to 70 in mock drafts. His range is absolutely wild. And he's a good value player, LaMarcus. He's blocking shots at a high rate. He's taking shit tons of threes. He's efficient. There's a lot of interesting stuff. And there's a comment here by Depressed Blazer fan in the chat saying categorical scarcity becomes even more pronounced in deeper leagues. And that is 100% true because it's not like you can just go find those assist guys deeper in drafts because they just don't exist. So getting that scoring, getting those assists, it is way more amplified. And you're going to see it when I do the 20 team mock later this week. I think it's, I don't know if it's tomorrow or two days time, I think it is. And you'll see just how wild shit gets in that one as the value of the top end guys really gets exaggerated. D'Angelo Russell goes at 42. You're seeing just an absolute run on point guards here. The next sort of point guard we're looking at on this list is DeJounte Murray and Marcus Smart, Drew Holiday. So we've uh, knocked a lot of point guards off the board and assists are getting hard to find at this point in the draft. D. Dunn, he, he just takes it carefully with his picks. Miles Turner. That is early for Miles Turner at number 43. Um, I think Turner is going to be better than last year. He's going to bang some threes. It's probably 10 spots too early, but in Dunny's uh, defense, he's picking on the turn. So he's not picking again for another 28 picks, and he's never going to get Turner. And if you wanted the three-point shooting, shot-blocking, free-throw percentage boost, and with KP, Kristaps Porzingis, Porzingis, and Jaron Jackson Hurt, two guys who can fill that role, then Turner's really that only guy that sort of fits into that area. Gordon Haywood goes at number 44. Yep, absolutely love that one. I think Marcus Smart had Brandon Ingram. Ingram needs to go in the queue because he needs to be coming off here, as does Sabonis. Uh, Robert Covington going at 45. I'm not in on that. I know Covington's been a consistent sort of top 50 player, um, but I worry about the Portland mix and how that affects his defensive numbers. Uh, Michael Porter. He goes next as well. That's an interesting pick at 46 and then Sabonis at 47. Porter may be a little bit early there, but I think the Sabonis one is bang on. Do I take... Huh, what do I want to do with my pick here? Do I take... I think Ingram is going to be who I want with my next selection if he will fall to me. Marcus Smart also is there for me because I'd love to get his... Uh, assists and steals. Jalen Brown, probably not going with Jalen. Or do I look at Drew Holiday as another guy for me to squeeze out there? I might throw Drew into the mix. Oops, did Drew just go? No, Drew just went at number 48. So I won't be taking him. Raptors Claw up uh, at number 48 as his selection. Um, Let's see. Yeah, the, 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 I think we're getting close to Porzingis' range. He's probably going to be next round, would be my guess. DeMar DeRozan goes at 49. Yeah, that's a, it's around the right spot. Nothing too much there. DeRozan has really changed his game lately, with assists really coming into it a lot more for DeMar. Um, and that gives him a lot more value than, say, just the empty scoring. Um, he doesn't hit any threes, of course, but great free throw percentage, solid field goals, and those really nice assist numbers. Um, Richie Benno, Roy is up next at number uh, pick number 50, and then it'll be up to me. So I'm going to get one of Ingram or Smart here. I, I do want Ingram, but Smart will have to do if that's how it ends up going. I can see Jalen going off the board here. Um, yeah, I can see Jalen being the pick or Drew. Oh, no, Drew's gone, hasn't he? Uh, Brooke Lopez. Well, that was definitely... A surprise, to be sure, but a welcome one. All right, let's just take Ingram there. Now, Ingram struggled with Zion last year, but at 51, yeah, that's uh, that's, a, that's a good one for me. I'll take Brandon Ingram at that spot. Helps me fill up my power forward position as well. Um, MSRF, 
ready to go for his pick. That was Ingram going at 51. And then MSRF, of course, takes Marcus Smart at 52. He was never going to get back around to me. And that was a debate for me. I'm um, considering DeJounte with my next pick. Uh, also, Malcolm Brogdon is going to be a guy that is in discussions for me. Now, I need to start looking at what I'm doing in terms of what my punting situation is. Maybe it's it's maybe blocks or f- it's probably field goal percentage actually. So let's see if we can get some block guys in and maybe maybe that's where we start going with a, with a Porzingis type of a player. Boogie Cousins will be a late round option for me as well because I've built my free throws up so far and my team free throw sitting at 85%, even a Hassan Whiteside could work for me. The world. I'm also amazed at how many people don't know what that sound drop is. People quote it to me all the time and they say things like the white. No, 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 it's the worst. And it is from Parks and Rec. It's uh, your mate, John Ralphio, the worst, Hassan Whiteside, because he sucks. Jalen Brown going at 53, Zion Williamson going at 54. Team Kingdom with the second last pick of uh, round four, number 55. He is on the clock. It's tough, man. 14 team leagues are tough. You got to make that difference happen at the air in the middle rounds. Uh, we're 52 picks in. Who's going to take that risk on those two injured players, Porzingis and Jaron Jackson? That is the uh, that is the question. Uh, I'm going to go. I just want to go back. I want to see where Kyrie ended up getting drafted. I feel like I missed him. Oh no, he went right up to Bradley Beal, which is a, a strong pick. I thought. Jonas Valanciunas goes at number 55. Just, you know, I love JV. 30 minutes is going to be tough for him to get, but he is absolutely rock solid in these mid rounds. And then uh, Christian James McCollum goes at number 56. I just think it's too early for McCollum. I don't, look, the scoring's nice and I getting that scoring in there is important. So I think that's that's a good reason. And then uh, Path Suthar takes Tony Warren Jr. Too early for, for TJ. He's at 57. He has got the... Um, Plantar fasciitis, I'm almost sure he's going to miss the start of the season. Even on a per-game basis, I think it's a little bit too early for Tony, and uh, that's too high for me. Don't, don't. It's probably the one pick, or that and the CJ one, which, sorry, Path, you made both of them, are two picks I probably didn't like the most. Um. All right. Malcolm Brogo Brogdon, that's annoying because I was going to take him, so he's gone at 58. What are we looking at here? Get some steals in. Is it DeJounte? Eric Bledsoe? Bull Cousins? Too early for him. Johnny Wall? Huh. John Wall. That is... He's looked great. No Harden, of course. No Christian Wood. He's going to sit back to back. So that gives me a level of pause for Johnny. But... It is super interesting, isn't it, to see if he is an option around that area, unless has he just got picked. No, DeJounte Murray just went uh, at number 59, so you're seeing point guards come off quite a bit here. Maximum Derek White is an option for me too. Maximum Derek. Tobias Harris goes at fifty at 60, sorry. Boring-ass pick, but absolutely great at that spot. Um, we're getting into Porzingis territory. Uh, I, do, I, do I want to roll the dice? I, yeah, I don't know that I do, but it's round five. My other guys are healthy. I think on a total basis, he's at about the right spot here. Derek White just goes at 61, so he's out of my grasp. Do I take KP here, get myself some blocks? Yeah, you know what? Let's just bite the bullet. Because I think it's more just highlighting this is probably the right area for KP. Because on a per-game basis, you're looking at a top 25, top 20 guy. So thinking um, thinking to grab him here. It's just, and I'm not going to grab any other injured guys after that, but this is, the I think, the right spot for me to go with uh, with Kristaps Porzingis. I think it's the first time I've drafted him this season, which is, uh, I, I, used, I normally love Porzingis. But, of course, the injuries are a uh, are a worry. Need to get assists on my next pick. So let's hope we can get a Lonzo Ball, a Kobe White, a Markel Fultz. You guys know that I'm big onto Kobe as a, uh, as a later round guy. And I'm massive into Fultz. I hope you guys saw him play on uh, Sunday. 
Whew, he uh, starting to look good. I am big on both of those blokes, and they are going to be my targets at the next pick, which is 79, and maybe I can get both 79 and 90, but they are going to be the targets. Coming up for me, Triple J, after Porzingis, sorry, it was Draymond Green at 63, and then Triple J, Jaron Jackson Jr. goes at number 64. We are a long way away from my selection. Still another 15 picks away. So uh, i got to hope that those guys can come through, but Eric Bledsoe's there, Johnny Wall, Nerlens Noel, uh, this is probably getting close to the Nerlens Noel range. Uh, Bud Heald, Hassan Whiteside, the Jedi, OG Ananobi. But what about Scarves? OG. Stop ones. OG. Uh, you better stop OG. Uh, that gives me a chance to play this one as well because Hassan Whiteside did just go off the board. Let's give it one more go. 65. The world. Oh, Buddy Heald goes at 66 and that prick depressed Blazer fan. Hayden, I believe your name is, taking Kobe White. What an asshole pick that is at 67. White has looked atrocious on defense, but he's scoring. He's getting assists. It's looking all right. He's looking pretty good, and you can get value on uh, on Kobe. His ADP is like 90 on some sites. He is going to be in this area to me, but maybe it's... You know what? Um, I'd love John Wall, but with Porzingis, I don't think that I want to pair him. Is Eric Bledsoe going to fall to me? Huh. All right, that's possible. Lonzo? The Padawan Colin Sexton? Hmm. A few options. Eric Bledsoe goes there at whatever that was. Um, 69. What's. Yep, 69 for Eric Bledsoe. Giggity! I think there's real value in that, to be honest. I think Bledsoe can be a better player than pick 69. And then we've got D. Dunn, 98, looking to make his selection to finish out round five. Okay with my team so far. Lillard. Nurkic, Porzingis, Don Mitchell, and Brandon Ingram on my squad. And then Blake Griffin goes at 70. That is too high, I think. Um, actually, maybe it's not. Griffin could be a top 50 player if he's healthy. That's a big if. But of course, last year on a per-game basis, he was ranked 260th. So he was this way off. Couldn't hit any shots. Rebounding was down. Doesn't get any defensive numbers. I would have let Griffin fall. And I definitely wouldn't pick him with Porzingis on my team. Um but I think it's a little bit early for Dunn. But again, he's got those double picks here, so he doesn't pick again for 24 more selections. So he's got to make it. Um, he's got to make his picks count. And if he reaches 10, 20 spots for what he thinks is the right pick, then he he does it. And his other pick. And Mitch Robinson says, "I'll take it from here." Um, I don't, I don't know about Mitch Robinson to be honest. Uh, Noel starting. I think he's going to start the season. Um, Robinson's going to have foul trouble. He's going to play off the bench. He's going to block shots. He's going to get your field goal percentage. He's a real specialist. In that regard, but man, he is, uh, he's tough to rely upon, isn't he? He's real tough to rely upon at this point, uh, especially with that dickhead Tom Thibodeau uh, coaching this squad. After Robinson goes Al Horford at 72, just absolutely rock solid. Horford might sit some games, but I think that's a really, really, really strong spot for him while uh, Ananobi goes next at 73. Ananobi's looked pretty good. He's more aggressive offensively. Of course, Kyle Lowry's not playing, so that takes some of that uh, hype away, but Ananobi is fine in this area. It might be a touch early, but it probably isn't. We're getting... Uh, interesting that Tom Bryant hasn't gone. Um, a few picks away from me, so I think Tom might go soon. Clint Capella at 74. Actually, Tom Bryant is 100% who I want here. Um, let's chuck him into the queue. 89 on fan tracks for Tom Bryant. There goes John Wall. Uh, goes John Wall at 75. I think that could end up being real value. Or do I take Fultz or Tom Bryant? Because I every draft, I seem to get dicked around by missing out on Markel Fultz. I could leave him for pick 90. I think there's zero chance that he gets back to me at pick 90. Um, oh, there's zero chance Tom Bryant gets back to me as well. This is a tough one. What am I valuing? What's hardest to find at this point? It is assists and points still. And I think that that is going to be what Fultz provides. Now, the Padawan Colin Sexton goes at 76, one of the best scorers in this portion of the draft. So there's some value in, in getting him at that area. Wendell Carter Jr., who's taking a lot of threes. He's not hitting any of them, but he's taking a lot. He goes at 77. I still believe in Carter. And we're seeing his passing start to look a little bit better at this point. But the uh, the fact that no shots are going in for him is a, is a concern. I still really like him, but a little bit of a worry. And then we've got, oh, Lonzo Ball goes at number 78. So it's my pick. Do I take Fultz or do I take Tom Bryant? Oh, shit. All right, let's... 
let's go Fultz because I just need point guards and guards. So Markel Fultz goes to me at 79. It's probably a little bit early. I'm not going to lie about that, but I'm banking on a fourth-year breakout, more minutes, and he's looking really bloody good. And I just need to get those um, point guards at this spot because these assists are flying off. So, uh, yeah, I like that pick. I like how my team is uh, is tracking at this point. Now, I had Fultz about the 80th ranked player, so I got him at pick 79. But I had to go a little bit higher because the, the value of those assists pushes him maybe to be a, a top 70 type of player. And that's why just going off a rankings list is bullshit. It's not how you draft in fantasy. It will cause you to lose, I guarantee you, unless you're in a points league. If you're in a category league, it will guarantee you to lose. If you just go down a list, you will lose. Yeah, you know, I'm just taking best player available. You will lose. That is not how fantasy works. Rankings are an imperfect science. Projections are too. But rankings are imperfect. Yeah, they're imperfect in terms of, um, yeah, not we got the imperfectness of the projections, but then the valuation as well. It's it's not real that valuation, so you shouldn't be really focusing on that. Anyway, after Fultz at seventy nine, it was Lowry Markin and goes at eighty, and Kevin Love goes at eighty one. And I'm glad I took Fultz there because all these other people commenting, I was going to take Fultz. I was debating Fultz, so he wasn't going to last back to me at ninety. That's not to say that Tom Bryant will, but maybe I get Boogie, maybe I get Nerlens Noel, maybe I get. Um, who else do I get? Um, doo -doo -doo. Lamello Ball just goes there at number 82. I think that's not bad. Lamello's passing look good. This, the shooting is going to be a struggle for sure. Um, it's looking more and more likely that I am going to get Tom Bryant. I might actually look at the double royal as well. Julius Randle in that spot. Um, let's... Where are we? Team Kingdom at pick 13, round six, which is number 83. And there he goes. The double royal Julius Randle. Um, Randle, he's frustrating to watch. He's not the future of that team, but uh, Thibodeau's going to play him. Uh, and he's going to put up some some numbers. I don't really have too much worry about that. Path Suthar. Uh, your picks, your double picks here to end round six at number 84 and 85. Jimmy Johnson wants enough. I think think the Lamelo ball pick at 82 is early. It probably is a little bit early, but I don't think it's outrageous. Stephen Adams goes at 84. That's a, the right spot for Steve as well. So strong pick there from you, Path. After I me mean, not liking your last couple, good one there for uh, Steve. But Jimmy Johnson puts up a good point here regarding oh you asshole. Uh, Demarcus Cousins goes at 85. That's who I was looking at. But my man, the tank Tom Bryant is still around. I think let's can we slide him through? Just slide him all the way through. That would be nice if we could do that. Um, yeah, I like that Cousins pick at 85. Is anyone going to take Taylor Horton Tucker in this draft? I think mean, that's a big question. Uh, he, how good was he on Sunday? Jesus, those numbers, man. But uh, just finding the minutes for him in that rotation is real tough. And maybe I'll talk about him a little bit later if someone talks about it, um, if someone picks him. But yeah, he's an interesting guy to talk about. We are five picks away from me as DeMarcus Cousins goes there just to annoy me. Um, oh, no, the tank. 86 for Tom Bryant. Bastard. Uh, all right, so we're four away. So let's look what we're going to do. Is it Nerland's Noel? It probably is. Actually, it... it or oh, is it Victor Oladipo? Oh, shit. Do I trust Oladipo? No, but I'm picking at pick 90. Is it... Is it an option? Of course it is. Oh, boy. Someone else take that Oladipo decision out of my hands, please. Huh. McCall Bridges, Alfred Payton. I want Payton because he's the starting point guard and he's bad, but he's, ah, Nerland's Noel. Okay, let's uh, uh, undo that pick because it got auto-drafted. And yeah, I'm not letting people auto-draft, guys. I don't know if that's who he wanted, but Jimmy, stop letting that timer run down. Jimmy, make your pick. Uh, Jimmy, 87. McCall Bridges at 87. Yep, absolutely fine. Now, what do I do here? Three away. Oladipo, Peyton, and Noel. I reckon I can slide Peyton through, or can I, to 107? I probably can slide him through to 107. 
Um, I definitely won't slide Noel through. So that is my target here. It's just, is it Oladipo just too good to pass up? I really worry about what he's going to produce, but it, is he too, he's too good, isn't he? Ooh, I don't know. At pick 90, I just, I used to love Oladipo. I'm just soured, soured on him so much, but how do you let him go at 90? And that's, that's the tough one. How, ooh, Brandon Clark. I love Brandon Clark. I loved him as a rookie. I thought it was absolute stupidity that he fell that far in a draft. The wiki Chris Boucher goes at 89. Oh, Jesus. Now the pressure's on. We'll talk about Clark in a minute. Oh, what do I do? Do I... Oh, I think it's got to be Noel. As much as I don't like passing on Oladipo there, it's got to be Noel. Oh, okay. So back to this, that Clark. Loved him. I thought he should have been a top 10 pick in that draft. Uh, had him number four in my dynasty rookie ranks. I think he's getting overdrafted this year. Um... I, don't, I just, yeah, look, I'm just worried about how the min, the minutes are going to play out. Uh, his field goal percentage is strong, but is he going to take this big step forward? I don't know. I just feel like he's getting overvalued in a lot of different places. Um, Richie Benno up next. Two for two, two, two. Roy at pick number 91. Where's Oladipo's got to go here? Uh, Mike Conley. Oh, man, he is another name in that mix as well. I'll throw him into the queue. He's a good option for me here. When I get back to my pick at 107. Oh, there goes Oladipo. All right, 91. Um, okay. So my team, Lillard, Mitchell, Fultz, Ingram, Noel, Porzingis, and Nurkic. Got some nice blocks going there. I just, Porzingis is the key to this team. Uh, if he's healthy, I win, I win it. I think pretty comfortably if he can be healthy after he comes back. Um, I don't want to go... Maybe I'm going a little bit early on saying I win it, but I think he is the real key here. Juggernaut. Oh, Killian Hayes. Ooh, 92 for Killian. Someone said that I'm punting points. I am absolutely not punting points, but thank you for that uh, announcement of my uh, of my strategy, which I'm not. Um, Killian Hayes. Yeah, Hayes is getting the minutes. He's getting the shots. He's absolutely looking rushed, although less so in game two. And that's going to always be the problem with rookie point guards. I don't think anyone uh, denies that. The big ragu, Dante DiVincenzo at number 93. Um, I like Dante. It might be a bit early. Boyan Bogdanovich goes next at 94. Even though I have DiVincenzo yeah, ranked pretty high, again, it's an imperfection in the ranking system. It's all really down to his steals. And if they regress, then he drops 30 spots. So that's why I'm not keen on picking him there. Darius Basley, of course. Of course, Darius Basley's going at number 95. Yeah, everyone knows how much I've talked this bloke up. And then Norm Powell at 96, which yeah, you saw me have that debate with Jared Johnson about Norm Powell a couple of days ago. Uh, but I think this is fine. Not at pick 70 where Jared was looking at him, but Powell here. Joshie Richardson goes at 97. Not massively keen on that. But the more guys that come off the board so that Alfred Payton can slide down to me or Mike Conley, one of those two, uh, I'll be happy. Um, so, yeah, Joshie Richardson at 97. He could have a bit of a bounce back. I'm not really feeling that. And I'll tell you who else is on my list. Aaron Gordon, who I've been pretty impressed with in limited minutes so far in the preseason. I'm not normally a huge Aaron Gordon guy, but this is absolutely a good area for him. Devontae Graham goes at 98, then at 99, Tyler Hero. Everyone has a hero. True. Zero people shouldn't have a hero. Um, yeah, I think that's okay for Hero. I'm not. I, a little bit worried about Hero, so I probably would have let him slide somewhat from there. Um, we're at number 100. Now this gets into the area where you're looking more at... You'd normally be looking at flyers, but now we're looking more into more solid players. The Italian cock goes at 100. Hands off my cock! Danilo Gallinari, that is. He goes at pick number 100. And now we're up to 101, and we are getting closer to my selection. Kemba Walker still on the board. Of course, he's going to miss the beginning of this season, but could be a real steal at this point. And oh, I don't know if I can risk it with KP, but it's... Uh, shit, Alec Burks goes at 101. That is early for Alec Burks. Whoa. And then Kemba Walker at 102. Good value. A good value on Kemba at that spot. Mike Conley, PJ Washington, Aaron Gordon, all these guys uh, around there. Whew, that is uh, that's early for Burksy, I think. Um, Buzz. At 103, takes Ravishing Rick Rubio. On it. I'll wait for the music. 
Who's seen Rubio in the picture? He His hair is like at his shoulders. He's got a beard. He looks spectacular. He looks real good. Uh, Serge Ibaka at 104, starting center for the Clippers. Maybe not that much upside, but pretty good pretty good spot to select Serge. Other guys I would have had ahead of him here, like Aaron Gordon, Conley, and Payton. So we've got three picks to mine, and I've got three guys in my queue. So I'm going to get one of those players. Is it just me getting... Nah, it's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to prioritize Conley... So I like his scoring, although those Peyton assists would be super, super valuable. Um, and I'm not sure where else I'm going to get assists. Huh. That's a tough one. Aaron Gordon? Do, ooh, I don't like that. Well, he's off the board now. Anyway, 105 for Aaron Gordon, so I won't pick, pick him. Down to Conley and Peyton for me. I feel way more secure in Peyton. Jeremy Grant? Definitely... Um, fallen value for Grant because he's been atrocious in the first two games. Let's take Conley here at number 107. I think that is good value. Mike Conley. Can Lord Alfred slide to me? He probably won't, but it's a possibility. But Conley wouldn't have. There's no way. But I like getting Conley at 107. Um, It's not crazy to say that Mike Conley could be a top 50 player. And this is how you win leagues. It might not work, but I'm getting him outside the top 100. Even like the Victor Oladipo pick and the Aaron Gordon pick. Like these guys could be top 50 if things go right, but maybe not Gordon as much. But that upside is really there. Otto Porter goes at number 108. Eh, fine. He's also been a top 50 player plenty of times in the past. Just a little bit worried about how the Bulls are going to use him with his injuries and them being shit house and the drafting of Patrick Williams and you know how they decide to play Thad Young as well. Not super... I, I like it at this area. In a 12-team league more so because we're more in flyer territory because this is only our eighth pick that we're making. So these are guys that are more solid parts of your rotation. I'm going to throw Paul... Oh, let's undo that one because it was an auto pick to Montrez Harrell. Um, let's throw Paul Washington Jr. into the list, into the queue. All right. Evan Fournier was who Zebrafish wanted and he was auto-drafted Montrez Harrell. We're getting to a stage where Harrell is, is a good pick here. Uh, Andy Wiggins at the top of the board. James Weissman at number uh, 84 here on Fantrax. Rishon Holmesy Holmes goes at 110. I think Holmes uh, is a better player than Hassan Whiteside. You know, I all think that. Oh, I, you all know that I think that. That's what I'm trying to say. So Holmes is uh, a good pick at this point. Really could be a top 50 guy again. That's And you compare that to, say, Fournier, which is a solid pick here. You're getting solid value is fine. But Holmes has got probably floor value here and upside to get better. So that's why I, I like that one. But the Fournier pick is its really strong. Ah, kingdom, you bastard. There goes Alfred Payton at 111 off. Now, that's going to make getting that extra point guard really tough. I've got to consider uh, Schroeder as a guy. I spelt that wrong for some reason. So we'll put Schroeder onto the list. The iron shoulder at Goran Dragic goes uh, at 112. Schroeder's got to start coming into it for me. Yeah. Marvin Bag Bagley? I don't want to do oh, I was gonna I don't want to do that, but Marvin Bagley just went at 113, so that's takes that decision away from me. Paul Washington and Dennis Schroeder are my two targets here, and we are five picks away. At the way things are sitting at the moment, my team is projected on top of the standing, so I am happy with that. That doesn't mean anything, or doesn't mean everything, it just means that I'm drafting well according to my own projections, and that, that's always a good start. Um, all right. Team Kingdom at 114. Ron Barrett Jr. looked much better in the second Knicks game. Let's see how much that holds, but your percentages are going to take a hit. But I have got, actually, the ability to... Well, there goes Paul Washington. I've got the ability to absorb Barrett's percentages and his ability to score and get some assists might work for me. I can absorb it. My free throws are 83% across my team, so I can absorb that. Andy Wiggins goes next at 115. We are two selections away. I've got Schroeder. I've got Barrett out there. Surprise Schroeder's fallen this far, to be honest. Um, Harrell also, who is an option for sure around this area, but it's not quite uh, not quite what I want. See, I'd never take Rui Hachimura ahead of uh, Montrez Harrell, who just went at 116. Never would uh, select. I just I do not believe in Rui, as people very much know on this podcast. 
we're starting to get into uh, yeah, the, some of Kingdom just said it. We're starting to get into the real interesting portion of this draft. Um, it's down to Shro. I, I never draft RJ Barrett unless it's a points league. Um, MSRF takes Seth Curry, so that does give me the option of picking Dennis Schroeder there. So I will do it. Maybe Barrett will come back to me with the next pick. Um, yeah, but look, even our next pick, which we're going to be picking, or I'm going to be picking at 135, it's still not even down to my bench. That is the difference in a 14-teamer. Uh, all right, two for two, two, two. His selection here at number 119. So I got Schroeder at 118. Yeah, really, again, happy with that result. Even though, again, he's projected 123rd in my rankings. Just, I, I don't know where the hell else I'm finding assists, really, at this point. It's really tough to do, unless it's Spencer Dinwiddie or Faku Kompazzo. It's really tough to get these these assist numbers. They're not abundant in this area. Another guy I'm going to be looking at to stash or to put on my bench, Plumley is an option for me. Barton, although I'm worried about his knee. Um, Okoro. Um, who's the other guy whose name I just completely forgot? Davis Bertans. Uh, Derek Jones Jr. That's the guy I was trying to get out. Uh, there goes Blunty, James Wiseman. Crowder goes at 119. Wiseman goes at 120. Now, Wiseman's going to be ready to practice. And it looks like he might actually get a preseason game in recovering from COVID. I don't know how much they're going to play him straight off. That is the concern. But eventually, he should push into high 20s minutes and be able to be a top 100 guy. So there's a real value in there at getting him at 120. Davis Bertans goes at 122. Did I miss someone? Yeah, Terrence Ross went at 121. Bertans at 122 and Jarrett Allen at 123. I am super worried about the Nets and Jarrett Allen. I think they're going to play DeAndre Jordan. They're going to start. There's Allen. They're going to play Jeff Green at center and they're going to play Kevin Durant at center. I I really worry that they're not even going to play Allen 20 minutes. It's asinine, but I worry that's what they're going to do. If he played 30 minutes a night, he's a top 50 guy. And if he gets traded and he plays 30, it's going to be a smash play, but there's risk in it. Vanilla Tice goes at 124, and then Tyrese Halliburton goes with the second last pick of round nine, who I think Halliburton's look pretty good, but at 125, it feels a little bit early. We've got Derek Rose still on the board. Bogdan Bogdanovich is still there. That is, that's what, what the hell is Bogdan Bogdanovich still doing there? Throw him into the queue. Throw Spencer into the queue as well. Lou Williams into the queue. Yep. Farton Will Barton into the queue. Just, just stacking some queue guys up here. Do I want Barrett? That is the interesting one, just to get a little bit of a scoring boost. But I'm, I'm not sure. I think, yeah, look, I think Barrett will be my target, and I reckon I'll get him. After Halliburton goes Carmelo Anthony, horrible pick. Sorry, D. Dunn, horrible. I just don't understand it. He's going to play off the bench 20 minutes a night. He wasn't even that good last year in a larger role. Sorry, mate. Sorry to shit on you. Eric Gordon at 127. Yeah, maybe. Maybe if Harden goes, but Gordon is pretty one-dimensional. But 127, I think it's I think it's okay. I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of it, though. Just hate that Carmelo Anthony pick. Just absolutely despise it. Sorry to you, Dunn. Um, all right. So interestingly, after that round, my projected finish drops down to like fifth after being first after the last round. It must not, have, not, must not have won projections. Didn't like my Dennis Schroeder pick. Aaron Baines goes at 128. He is the starting center for the Raptors. Very good value there for a Svino. Svino, Svino. I don't know how you're pronouncing that name. Montrez Harrell still available. It's getting to the stage where you got you just really got to take him. But his best category is field goal percentage. And I'm not really competitive in that area anyway. And it's not gonna, he's not going to make me competitive there. So it's a waste for me. Is it, someone says, is it too early? No, not at all. Let's just throw that comment in the chat. Uh, Bogdan Bogdanovich goes at 129. That is late for Bogdan. That is some really strong value. I think Derek Rose is also uh, a late. He's still on the board. Uh, and do I go for Mason Plumley? Huh. May, big Mace. Uh, Will Barton, I am super worried about Barton's knee. I just don't understand what this injury is. He's been hurt since March, basically. He hasn't played. The Spur, Dunk Robinson goes at 131. I've seen people taking him in the, in the top 100, which I think is ridiculous. But at this spot, it's fine to get some threes onto your team. I'm going to take Rowan Barrett with my next pick. I'm two away. Uh, I don't think that people are going to pick him here. But I think that he will work. Well, I know he's going to get big minutes. I know he's going to get usage. Delon Wright just goes. I'm super worried about Delon Wright, by the way. I hate the hate his how he looks at the moment. I just I'm not liking it at all. I'm still okay with him as a fly pick, but I'm I'm hating what what's going on there. Um, 
yeah, Duncan Robinson's fine at this spot at 131. D-Long goes at 132. 133 is your next pick. Um... George Hill might get you some value. Karis Levert's still on the board. Uh, well, there goes Derek Rose at 133, which is great value, to be honest. I really like that pick. I think Faku is going to come up soon. Poku, Alexei Pokusevsky, he's going to come up soon as well. And now I'm just waiting for Richie Benno to make his selection at uh, whatever number it is, 134. And he takes PJ Tucker, which I just don't understand at all. I uh, don't see the value in PJ Tucker there, but that does give me the opportunity to take Rowan Barrett for my pick there at 135. Uh, hoping I can get Mason Plumley on the next one at 146, but loving getting Barrett at that spot. I've got the percentage, the free throw percentage to absorb. The field goal percentage was terrible anyway. Um, and he helps my scoring out quite a bit. And that's part of why his numbers are so shit, because high volume and terrible free throws, but I can absorb it. My team can be okay there. Derek Jones Jr. goes at 136. He's looked pretty good in these first two games for the Blazers, showing a lot more pop offensively too. So I think getting his defensive stats does work out for you in that area as well. Lou Williams at 137. I think you've got to like that one. Um, I Yeah, I need a big man. I need Plum. Montrez Harrell's still around. People actually hate him. Uh, he, he should be he should be going more than this. Like someone, oh, there he goes. Montrez goes at one thirty eight. Very good from you, Jimmy Johnson. That is snagging some value at that spot. Um, fourteen teams, man. It's it's hard. Things start to thin out really quickly, and your categorical scarcity that's burnt into your brain changes somewhat. And player the runs are deeper. Your distance between picks is further away. Kingdom is picking at one hundred and thirty nine. Don't take Big Mace, who is actually not a good NBA player, but he's going to have that opportunity. Smoke and Joe Harris goes at 139. And then we have Path Suthar, who is picking to finish off round 10. And then we're into the bench. And then we can start looking at some flyers. And that's where I'm going to be starting to look at guys like Isaac Okoro, Darius Garland, Faku Kompazzo, uh Kevin Porter. In fact, Okoro. Karis Levert's still around? Jesus. Um... Okoro, he's going on to... Dinwiddie's still there. This is absolutely where we're looking at these guys. DeAndre Jordan goes at 140 to finish off round 10. That's a strong pick from you, uh, Path, as well. As the starting center, he can absolutely get you way more value than that uh, than that spot. All right, I need to... Yeah, I need, I need blocks. And that's what Plumlee's hopefully going to do. Tim Hardaway just goes off there at that last pick. Maxi Kleber... Jakob Pertl also options for us here, but I think Plumlee is the right guy. But man, leaving Levert and leaving Dinwiddie there doesn't really feel right, does it? But could I leave Plumlee to 163? I, I, I doubt that. Hopefully one of these blokes, Kingdom, Jimmy, Zebra, or MSRF can take Dinwiddie and Levert, and I don't have to worry about it. And then I'll try and get Okoro at one. 163, who's looking really good, albeit on teams where, or these Cavs teams who are limiting uh, you know, minutes to guys like Love and, and Colton Sexton didn't play as well. There goes, oh, actually, let's uh, undo that because it was an auto pick. As I said, there goes Karis Levert, but let's undo that one. Um, someone asking, how do you search? Just literally up the top there, it says player search. You can go find that. And that was uh, Kingdom, who's struggling. He must, he must be trying to scroll down that list to find out who he wants. So he's got another 45 seconds on the clock now before he searches. Oh, you bastard. I shouldn't have undone that pick. <laughs> Mason Plumley goes at 142. What a bastard move that is. Oh, man. How did Jimmy Johnson, this is for you. How did you? Oh, no. There goes Faku as well. You know what, Jimmy? Faku. Um, just decimating me these last two picks 144 uh i'm gonna throw darius garland onto my uh he's looking a little bit better garland the numbers haven't really been there uh he's looking a little bit better though so i'll throw him onto there but karis levert and spencer did he's still there i can't i can't let them get this far down can i surely not i've got to take karis at this spot um if it gets to me of course faku jesus Mate, I am talking Faku up way too much. Uh, and to be honest, 
I'd like him here in a 12-team league, but at pick 11, maybe it's a little bit early. And that's the difference between a 12 or a 14-team league is that a spot where you'd normally take someone as a flyer in a 12-team league, it might be a bit early in a 14. So I think that's how I feel there. So Joe Ingles goes at 144. Anthony Edwards at 145. Um, all right, what are we doing here? Am I taking Spencer? Yeah, how do I let him fall this far? Or do I take Karras? Let's take Spencer. I couldn't let those two guys just flop around for that long. Uh, on the, in the draft queue, I think there's just there's just value in them, and if there's trades go down or injuries happen or whatever, I think you just got to take that flyer. Um, Roy is up at 147, hoping hoping I can get Levert slide through or Garland slide through to me next pick. Otherwise, Isaac Okoro is there. Um, but you're getting Dinwiddie to, for some scoring and for some assists. Yeah, he has horrible defensive numbers and horrible uh, field goal percentage. Ah, that Plumley pick, man, that was one that I wanted. So I'm not happy about that. Muxy Kleber goes there. What other big men can I look at? It's getting a bit rough with the big men stuff. If it's a Zubats, Mark Gasol. Surprised Denny Avdia hasn't come off the board yet. Well, there goes Jakob Pertl to Raptors Claw, who I love, but I'm just not sure how those minutes are going to uh, play out. Juggernaut. Picking at 149, and Danny Green goes. As low upside as you can get, but that's okay for pick 11. You just got to make sure you're getting some upsides with the last couple. And there goes Karras at 150. Really, really good pick to get Karras Levert there at that area. Um, Paul Millsap still around. Dylan Brooks goes. That's fine. You can have Dylan Brooks. I think that probably hurts you more than it helps you. He goes at 151. My projections are liking Isaac Okoro at the moment. Now, why is that? I think it's yeah, some of his defensive stats. Yeah, that's probably why. Um, Cameron Johnson at 152. Johnson was really good in the bubble, but Jay Crowder is going to have an impact on what Johnson can do this year. So I think that limits some of his upside, but there's no 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 problem with him there. I think it, it probably is a little bit too early. What about the pencil? Harrison Barnes, Barnsey. Is he going to go at any point? I see him up the top of my list here or close to the top. It's getting It's definitely getting into Barnes territory. And he's more of, he's definitely a 14 team league guy rather than a 12 teamer. Who is wasting the time here as Spino? Jeff Teague. My name is Jeff. Might might be worthwhile for the start of the season while Kemba's out for sure. Um probably would have let that slide another round or two. D Dunn. Can you redeem yourself from the Carmelo Anthony for fiasco? Of course it's only me that thinks it's a fiasco, but yeah. Malik Beasley still around? Um Larry Nance still around. I think it's definitely getting into Nance territory here. Larry Nance is a really good player. D Dunn's dropped out. So if he's dropped out, he's not getting um, unautoed if he's not online because he's not online. So he just gets autoed if that's the case because I'm not waiting for him to come back. All right, D Dunn, you're out. You are getting autoed. That's fine. Um, Terry Rogier gets autoed for D Dunn and then we'll waste this other timer on his pick in case he just comes back and then he'll go on to auto draft after this. So Terry Rogier, again, at this point, who knows how they're going to run that rotation with Graham and Ball and Rogier. But um, yeah, Rogier is worth a, worth a fly here as your 11th pick and then coming back into your 12th selection. Let's see what he's probably going to end up with Obi Toppin, which is uh, not a good one. I don't want to hear any more about Obi-Wan. Hello there. Um, let's run this clock all the way down. All right, who's got it? Who's got it? All right, he's going on auto after this one. He has dropped out. Thank you for appearing and then disappearing. Obi Toppin, that's going to really kill your team, D, D Dunn, after that Carmelo Anthony fiasco. I said, can you redeem yourself? And the answer is clearly no. Um, all right. As Pino, we've got three picks left each. 157 is this next selection. Um, all right. Alexei Pokusevsky. All right, Kevin Porter goes at 156. Pokusevsky goes at 157. Miles Bridges goes at 158. Love the upside pick there on all of those guys. Malik Beasley at 159. Some real interesting upside picks uh, happening at this point in the draft. Um, Isaac Okora is still around. I see who I'm going to... Oh, is it him or Garland that I take?
Um, poor. I like Garland as a flyer. We're getting way too late though. 160. There goes Mark Gasol. Oh, hi, Mark. At 160. Almost zero upside in Gasol there, considering how little I think they're going to play him. But he's still a really good player, of course. Uh, Larry, Na oh, Larry Nance is still there. Maybe it's got to be Nance instead of Okoro or Garland. It probably has to be, doesn't it? Yeah. Whoa, I've got Nance and Okoro not far apart. And Isaac Okoro is looking pretty good. I'm going to have a look what Okoro's stats are at the moment. We're talking about, oh, there goes Garland at 161. So that takes that away from me. Okoro, 12, 4, and 4. Yeah, I've got a... Oh, Okoro's looking real good. Here, yeah, now Nance, I think his upside is capped. There's no way Okoro slides to me, is there? Uh, if I don't pick him here, he's not coming back at 174. Nance could. Let's let's just you know go into the upside pick, which is what I've got to do here with Okoro. Um, it might not work. But I think he's, with how well he's playing, he's got to be their starting small forward. He's looking super, super good at the moment. Um, all right. Well, that takes the decision out of my hands because Larry Nance goes at 162. As I said, back-to-back Cavs. Roy, let's go with triple Cavs. There it is, Isaac Okoro. Three in a row for the Cavs. That's 163 for Okoro. Um, again, it's an upside pick. He's on my bench. Lou Dort goes the next one. I'm going to use this so I can take a drink of water. Bort? Oh, come on, Bort? Mommy, Mommy, buy me a license plate. No, come along, Bort. Are you talking to me? No, my son is also named Bort. Um, yeah, Dort goes there. I think that's some value for Dort. Um, back to the Okoro one. I didn't love his translations coming out of college, but if he's going to get minutes, and a lot of rookies aren't, and I think he's going to get pretty big, big minutes early on, and he looks he looks better in the NBA than he looked in college, Okoro, I think it could be value. He could be a top 120 guy. He could be a top 100 guy, maybe. Pretty excited to see how that goes. Nemanja Bialica, that is lowest upside pick. I think you could imagine at 165, but he could still produce at that level. But I'm not loving that one from you, Zebrafish. If it's a Zubat, that's a good pick from you, Jimmy Johnson, at 166. Yeah, there's not many big men around at this point, and there's really not many upside big men at all. Interesting, the Anthony Melton starting for the Grizzlies today. Again, I don't know the results of that game because I'm recording before it finishes. Um, Gary Trent's going to come into the mix, but there are not many big men here at all. You know who I'm going to throw in this queue? Just to keep with the guys I've been hyping up. Calden Johnson. I've got to put him. I can't spell. I'm going to stick him on the queue because I want, want, want him with one of my last two picks. Paul Millsap still there. Now, that's not upside, but what's his name is? Okoro is. So just taking Paul Millsap probably... Help what I need for some defensive stats? Yes. Yes, I think it does. Justin Holiday, another... Oh, there goes Millsap at 168. Well, that ruins that dream. That would have been a nice one for me. Jordy Clarkson's still there. Jesus. I need steals. Who... Oh, is it just... Oh, Justin Holiday? Jesus, that is... Oh, that's rough as shit. Um, or is it the wave pool? Let's throw DeAnthony in there. He's going to get me steals. They're starting him today, as I said. Oh, Harrison Barnes. Barnesy. Kuzma goes at 169. Is Kuzma better than Taylor Horton Tucker? I think the answer to that is no, but he's probably going to play over him. But I wouldn't be... I don't think... If Frank Vogel said, Kuzma, you're out of the rotation so Horton Tucker can play, I don't think it's the wrong decision because it means that... Well, Kuzma doesn't have to play the three and Horton Tucker's better than him. Uh, will it happen? No, because for some reason, Kuzma's the most fetishized player in the entire NBA. Uh, especially by Lakers people. Um, but yeah, that's an interesting one for Kuzma and Horton Tucker. Cam Reddish goes at 170. That's a pretty strong pick from you, Kingdom. What am I going to do with my pick? I want some steals. I think it's going to... Oh, Gary Harris is there. Josh Okogie. Nice, Gary! Okogie has been starting uh, for this team. Uh, the Timberwolves. Paddy Beverly goes at 171. Zebrafish, he's getting ready to go. I'm just going to make sure that the auto-picking is set for... Yeah, done. So when it gets back to his pick. 
Um, Patrick Beverly at 171. I think that's upside as well for Beverly because he can be much better than he showed last season. Just give him some more minutes and he'll be fine. Um, I'm really letting this clock wind down, wind it down, Zebrafish. Make your selection. So ideally with my last two, I want Melton and Johnson and giving me an upside bench of Okoro, Dinwiddie, Melton and Johnson. Uh, and I think that is upside because I could see at least three of those guys potentially having top 100 seasons. I don't predict it, but they, I can see how they do it. And the one that I probably can't see is Melton getting there. Dwight Powell at 173. Yep, no worries at all. It's big Josh Lloyd's pick. Jordan Clarkson goes at 172, sorry. Then Dwight Powell at 173. Let's take the wave pool to get some steals back onto this squad. Um, and I just think he's a better player than uh, than Dylan Brooks. So Melton at 174. You know, happy with getting him at that area. Um just to boost those steals up. Now, it's, if you look at my projected rankings, like my last guys, Okoro, Melton, Dinwiddie, Barrett, they're ranked 138th, 174th, 176th, and 189th, respectively. But that's just, it's not the full, um, it's not the full um, yeah, discussion. It's not the full story behind where those guys are because it's about upside, it's about statistical scarcity. And Jimmy's saying here, can you tell me why you... He, he debated between Melton and Beverly. Can you tell me why you picked Melton? Well, I picked Melton because Beverly wasn't available. Although Beverly wasn't necessarily on my radar, but I didn't have that choice, so that's why. So let's rewind that Dorian Finney-Smith one because it got auto-picked. Is... Is Richie Benno there or not? Uh, yeah, he is. So he takes Kyle Anderson, who's starting at the four... And while Justice Winslow's out and Jaron Jackson's out, he's going to be a useful pick at uh, as your 13th pick at number 175. Yeah, that's fine. No problem at all. Raptors, Claw, my next selection. What number is my next? Derek Favors. Hmm, backup center with low upside. Not really. 191 is my next one. But I don't mind that one. Thomas Sadoransky at 177. We're getting into backups in this area. And that's why I just want to grab some guys with a bit of upside. Now, I don't mind Sadoransky there for his uh, assist upside. JJ Redick for his threes. Tristan Thompson at 179, a guy that can give you some boards. No problem at all. I just like some upside picks. So some other names here, like Avdia, I think he's a guy we look at. Uh, Svi McKayluk, Gary Trent, Gary Harris, Josh Kogi, Troy Brown, George Hill, who I think has a chance to be a starter for the Thunder to at least begin this season. Not that you want to rely upon him too much, but at this stage, there's value in him. And of course, my man, Calden Johnson, who's going to sit uh, here as an upside pick on my bench. Um, you can look at Shake Milton. Uh, the Sixers are just continually talking up. I don't really see how he's getting the playing time they're hoping, but he could. George Hill goes at 180. That's strong. Ah, bastardo. Calden Johnson goes at 181. Marcus Morris at 182. Luke Kennard at 183. So let's reassess what I'm going to do with my selection. Do I... I'm going to throw Trenner in there. As an option for me, Gaz Trent. I'll throw Denny in there as well. Again, just really want the upside of these guys. Really want some upside picks at this portion of this size of a draft. Svi, Troy Brown. Maybe Troy Brown is a guy I'll put in there as well. Could be the starting small forward for the Washington Wizards. There it is. Talon Horton Tucker. All right, so this is what I want to talk about with Tucker. 184. He's been awesome, but the Lakers rotation is Dennis Schroeder, KCP, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Marc Gasol, starting five. Backups, Alex Caruso, Wes Matthews, Kyle Kuzma, Markeith Morris, Montrez Harrell. Well, there's 10 guys. So Horton Tucker, will he play over Markeith Morris? Seems unlikely. Will he play over Kyle Kuzma? Seems unlikely. Over Wes Matthews? Almost definitely not. Caruso? Definitely not. Harrell? Definitely not. So he's probably the 11th man. So, well, there goes Denny Avdia. Um, at Justin Holiday goes at 185 and Avdia at 186. Um, so Horton Tucker has been great, but just how does he get enough minutes there? And it's the same sort of thing with Harry Giles in Portland. And Terry Stotts came out today and said just as much, saying, well, that's great, but we've got Nurkic and we've got Cantor and Giles has looked good, but we've got those other two guys. So maybe let's just calm down a bit before we anoint him to have this huge role in the rotation. Oh, f Gary Trent goes at 187. The painter Matisse Thibel goes at 188. My uh, Q is getting evaporated here. Maybe... What do we do? Uh, have I got anyone that can block some shots around this area? JaVale? Mm, I don't want to do that. Mo Bumba? God, no. Um, 
the rock DJ. No, it's pretty rough at this point. Um, Josh, Fima K. Luke goes. All right, let's just take Troy Brown to round out this draft uh, at 191. Again, it's just a bit of an upside pick. Yeah, it's hard in this draft. I'm not super happy with how it has panned out. I'm really strong in points. I got good assists. I got good steals. I got good free throws. I've got solid enough threes, and I'm solid enough in blocks. Horrible field goal percentage, really poor rebounds, and my turnovers, of course, are terrible. Justice Winslow goes at 192, but that's what we got with these um, these upside picks, the Okoros, Meltons, Browns, and Dinwiddie, and Barrett even, uh, who could really come through and uh, and give me some upside there, but that's what you got to do, I think, in these drafts. Cody Zeller goes at 193. After Winslow goes at 192. And then how long has this draft gone for? Uh, hour 15, not too bad. Definitely not as long as an auction draft. Um, and then Jimmy going to make his pick. Eventually, some point. Come on, Jim. At the moment, my team is projected fifth. In, but that's before I go and uh, make the adjustments based on um, yeah, how much the bench gets used and replacement players and all that sort of stuff. Dan Gafford goes at number 194. Juancho Hernan Gomez at 195. And then the last pick is Path Suthar, who is coming in for the last pick at 196. Path, let's go make your pick so we can get out of here. And I can tell you how these standings actually look in the end. My team, Damian Lillard, Donovan Mitchell, Markel Fultz, Brandon Ingram, Nerlens Noel, Kristaps Porzingis, Yusuf Nurkic, Mike Conley, Dennis Schroeder, RJ Barrett, Spencer Dinwiddie, Isaac Okoro, DeAnthony Melton, and Troy Brown. And that last pick in that in the draft, 196, was Tyus Jones. All right, I'll go and uh, get you those standings and show you how the teams look. All right, so let's go and have a look at these uh, projected standings now. Um, and as you can see, now, because it is a deeper league... Um, or tick replacement players to help for guys that injured because it's a deeper league. I think the percentage used for your bench players is going to be lower, and that's mainly because of the the more streaming or more upside nature of a bench in a deeper league. So you're going to be cycling through those bench guys a lot more than you would in say in a ten team league, and more in a, in a twelve I'd probably do it as seventy five percent. In a ten I'd probably do it as ninety percent, uh, and then the deeper you get, the the smaller I'd use that percentage bench player to do. I've got a bit of work to do in this one. Like my team, it was looking strong at one point and then it uh, it fell off towards the end because of those upside picks. Because, you know, taking Schroeder, who maybe wasn't the greatest pick at that point, taking the Yokoros and the Dinwiddies, who didn't rank out that high, but there is upside in them, uh, came out fifth there behind Ferris, then Kingdom, Zebrafish, Path Suthar, me, MSRF, Jimmy Johnson, 2 for 222, Raptors Claw, Buzz, Depressed Blazer Fan, Juggernaut, As Pino, and then, this is why you don't auto draft or why you don't just draft off a rankings list, D Dunn comes in last. That'll do it for me today, guys. Subscribe, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube. Uh, give it a comment below, five stars on Apple Podcasts, all that stuff, guys. We are done here. Thank you so much for listening, everyone. See ya. <laughs>